CFI. Hey, Gregor here, and we are back for another Insider. Big month, April, and we have a very special guest with us today, Mr. John Alberson. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you. Thank you. So John is one of our professional drivers, and I'm going to start off with him giving us a great safety message. So let's see what you have today, John. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, safety message that I'll go off of today is one that hits home to everybody. It should hit home to everybody. Um, is get out and look. Yep. I don't think you can ever get out and look enough. Congestion, the amount of trucks that are on the highway, the amount of trucks that we battle in truck stops on a daily basis. Things are always changing. Your environment is always changing. Yep. Um, so within five minutes, something can change all around you. So I train students and I, it's one of my big things is always get out and look. Just be assured of your surroundings. That, that's a fantastic one. I would tell you, if you look at our statistics from a safety perspective, almost 50% of our accidents are slow moving. So when you think just about what you said right there, how many of those could have been prevented if we would have just got out and looked one extra time? Mm -hmm. And not not always are we the ones that's backing into somebody. Obviously, you know, we have people hitting us too at the truck stops or at a shipper, but that extra couple of steps would save us so much money. And every month we spend well over $100,000 just on little things like that where we have those slow maneuvering accidents. So great message. Well, Sarge, that's your handle. And, yes, sir. And I know why, but I want you to give the audience a little bit of history about you, what you've done in your past life, what got you into truck driving, and what do you do here at CFI for us? Graduated high school, uh, Cabot, Arkansas. Didn't know exactly where I wanted to go. After, like most 18-year-olds, you know, um, I had a family that had served in the military, so I figured at that point it was, I couldn't fail at that. So um, I enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1993. Um, I did four years. Um, I did the ultimate job in the Marine Corps, but I was a cook um, and I absolutely loved it. And my father, who served in the military at that point, was in law enforcement. And I knew that that's when I was from a small age, I saw him in uniform. So that's what I wanted to do. So in 98, I applied for Jacksonville, Arkansas, the police department there. And I stayed there for just at 21 years, just a little over 21 years is where I stayed there. Holy cow. Now, did you, if I'm, I was thinking that you had a canine with you at one point in time too, did you not? I did. I was a canine handler. I, I served a lot of different roles. Most of my career in, in law enforcement was on patrol to a crime prevention type, uh, no tolerance task force officer for a short period of time. Then I uh, put in for a canine and was a canine for about 10 months to a year and absolutely loved it. I mean, it, it's, it's a job. It's a fun job. It's probably the best job inside of a police department. Um, you have your partner with you the whole time and, yep. you know, you get to get out and, and play with him and, you know, they're, he's friends with the family and all that. Yep. You know, it's not all business. A lot of people are scared because they think that it's an aggressive dog that's going to attack everybody in the family. That's not the case. My, yep. my, my child would play with him and, and pet him and everything. And thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate that. Tell us what got you into trucking. What got you here? 2019, when I left law enforcement, I really didn't know where I wanted to go, what my career path was going to lead me at that point. Resorted back to what I did for so many years. And that was I drove a car mm -hmm. that's I spent 12 hours a day, roughly in a patrol car, driving around, looking out windows. You, you're pretty much left to be your own responsible person yep. as an officer, make your own decisions, do what you know is the right thing to do or the safe thing to do. So I talked it over with my family and I thought, well, I think I'll get a CDL license and I think I'm gonna be an over the road truck driver <laughs> because I, I wanna see the country. I like to travel, I like to see things. And so that's, I, I took the jump. We're talking about distracted driving this month. I wanna know from one of our best out there on the road every day, what does distracted driving mean to you? It can mean so many things. We think as distracted drivers because of what we hear on TV that distraction drivers is a cell phone. But a distracted driver can be anything from a car driving by you, honking their horn, problems at home, bills, stresses. We face a lot of things out here on the road. We're not with our families all the time. Where you got kids, our spouses are taking care of our kids and they're dealing with the stresses that we can't deal with because we're not there. And so that stresses us. That's a distraction. If your mind's not in the right place, you're a distract. It, it's distracted. When you wrap up all that stuff, how do you avoid it? I minimize mine. Same thing in law enforcement. There's times when you 
you can't afford to be distracted. Driving an 80,000 pound missile through Atlanta and rush hour traffic is not the time to be distracted. So I don't need to be on a phone call with my wife or somebody at work or something along that line, arguing or discussing some type of issue that could be handled after the fact. When I'm done at the end of the day, then that's when I can deal with all the problems that I need to deal with. Having a student on the truck because I train, you have to be able to teach them what distractions are. A trainer in the truck for a student is a distraction because we're talking, we're trying to explain things, and it's coming at them at 100 miles an hour. And a lot of times the students or even other drivers, they become accustomed to these things. So they don't, it's, they don't think it's a distraction for them anymore. And so they think they can take a phone call, smoke a cigarette, drive one handed, reach over, grab some food, look back and get in their cooler, do stuff like that. And within two to three seconds, they're off the road yeah. and they've killed somebody or they've hit somebody or they've damaged something. And that's, that's one of the big things. If they would just slow down you know, and minimize their distractions. We're always going to have them, yeah. you know, cars cutting in front of us. Those are things we can't control. So what would be the one tip that you would provide all of our professional drivers, not only at CFI, but in the industry, if you had one tip about distracted driving, what would it be? Minimize your self-imposed distractions, pre-plan, set yourself up for success for the day for the trip. Don't put so much on you that you're distracting yourself. So let's talk about your truck. I drive the first responder or one of our first responder trucks. It actually has a firefighter, a EMT and a canine officer on the side of it. And those are Joplin city employees. That was done to recognize the city of Joplin since that's where we're, our home base is at. So what's it mean for you to drive that truck? It means the world because there might be respect there, but it's not that it's always shown because people are afraid to show support sometimes out, yeah. out loud that they support law enforcement. Of course, everybody that I've talked to the last 20 something years, they all love firefighters. You know, they're there to save the day. Police officers, we don't always get that. Same recognition. Same right? recognition because sometimes th bad things happen. Bad yeah. things happen. People go to jail. We're the bad people. So to be able to drive a truck that a company will is proud enough and bold enough and brave enough to put that on a truck means a lot. Do you get a lot of attention with it? I do. I get people driving by and waving at me. You know, they want the, the horn blow, you know, kids. Um, I've stopped at rest areas um, for breaks and I come out and there's people standing beside my truck getting their picture taken. Oh, wow. Um, so I'll actually hold the camera for them and take their picture. You know, they can take their picture with it and everything. Um, and I always try to, if I'm at a truck stop and a police officer comes through, I always try to go up and thank them for their service because they don't, they don't get it enough. They get enough shaming at times, but they don't get a pat on the back or a thank you enough. Continuing quarterly training. This quarter, we're going to focus on being perceptive. How would you tie that into distracted driving? Being aware of your surroundings. Perception is reality. What's the public's perception of us as a company? Are we a safe company? Are we a respectful company? What do our customers think? Are our drivers professional? I look at all of that when it comes to just the perception in whole. We are very proud of our, our brand, our trucks, our equipment, our professional drivers. We're proud of who we are, right? And we feed 3,000 families every day. And we want to make sure that people know that. So that's something that we take a lot of pride in. We have quite a few events coming up here in the near future. And I want to make sure and share that with you. We have a town hall that will be coming up. And we have to wait till Heartland actually releases their earnings before we can actually go out and, and talk about our financials for the for the quarter. Probably going to be late April, early May. Uh, but as soon as we have a date nailed down, we'll make sure we share that with you. We also have the uh, Q1 safety meeting and driver award that will be on May 3rd. So we look forward to recognizing a lot of our professional drivers and having a good safety meeting. Continue to keep your eyes on Work Vivo. There's uh, over at the right hand side, there's always a calendar over there kind of showing what's coming up, what are the next things that are big and important. Uh, pay attention to those because that's always being updated. So take a look at that. John, thanks for being here. Thank Appreciate you. you being a part of this. Thank you, sir. Folks, I hope you have a great week. Be safe. Uh, hopefully this was a good insider. It's always great to have a professional driver with us and uh, he's one of our finest. So folks, have a great day. We will see you. Be safe on the backside. Bye-bye.